Hey everybody, welcome back to The Literate Texan. I'm your host, Randy Ray, here at Driftwood Ranch with my late September book haul. So, what I've got here are seven books that have come in the mail for various reasons. Not all of them came in the mail. Most of them came in the mail, but one of them we picked up in person at a local bookstore. But there are very, reasons, very different reasons for each book on the list. And I'll go over that as I review each book. So, to start, I got this copy of Antony and Cleopatra, and as you can see, it is a used copy, or at least a very dented copy, and this was written by William Shakespeare. Shake Timber is not over, even though I haven't really made any Shakespeare videos. I've got Richard III here, and I've got Romeo and Juliet here. Richard III's sitting here, right beside me, in fact. Romeo and Juliet? Ah, it's around here somewhere. So anyway... Um, of these, Antony and Cleopatra is the only one that I haven't read yet. And I like these Folger Shakespeare Library editions. I don't like them when they're damaged like that. But uh, I don't know. For whatever reason, this one was kind of hard to find. Um, at least in terms of a new copy. Although I think I might have a new copy that accidentally got delivered to a lady friend's house along with a gift that I had for her. And she's supposed to bring it back to me. But who knows when that's going to happen, right? So... Antony and Cleopatra by William Shakespeare. I'm really looking forward to reading that. I am going to finish all three of those plays this week before the end of the month, I promise. The number two book in my book haul is called This is Pleasure, a Story by Mary Gateskill. Okay, this was recommended, uh, and it sounded really intriguing to me too, but this was recommended by Priscilla at The Evening Reader, and I enjoyed her comments on it and what she was saying about it. On the back... It's got an excerpt. I don't want to say I don't understand. That's weak and whining, I said. And besides, I do understand. What do you understand, she asked. I answered calmly, that this is the end of men like me, that they are angry at what's happening in the country and in the government. They can't strike at the king, so they go for the jester. They may not win now, but eventually they will. And who am I to stand in the way? I don't want to stand in the way. So that's an excerpt from there. This looks like a good one for Shorty September for sure because this is only, this isn't even 100 pages. This is 80 something pages. It's really unusual to find a book that short. So, anyway, thanks for the recommendation, Priscilla. I look forward to having something to say about that probably very, fairly soon. I may read that tonight. I don't know. Next up, this would be number three of my September book haul The Movie Goer by Walker Percy. And I don't know much about this other than it was recommended by Clifford Lee Sargent at Better Than Food. Sorry for the pause there. Couldn't remember his name. According to Alfred Kazin, Kazin in Harper's Magazine, it's an altogether tragic and curiously noble study in the loneliness of necessary human perceptions, as decorous as an old-fashioned comedy of manners. And then Phil McCombs from the Washington Post says, when the moviegoer was published in 1961, its author was 44 years old, a doctor who hadn't practiced, a writer whose only published work in 20 years was a batch of metaphysical essays, a member of a prominent Southern family who chose to live in quiet obscurity. Today, it is an internationally acclaimed classic. Binks, this is the, the, the summary from the back of the book here. Binks Bowling, a young New Orleans stockbroker, fills his days with movies and casual sex. His life offers him nothing worth retaining. What he treasures are scenes from films like The Third Man and Stagecoach, not the personal emotional experiences he knows other people hold dear. When he is on the cusp of turning 30, however, something changes for Binks. On Mardi Gras, he embarks on a quest for some form of of authentic experience. The consequences of Binks' hunt on both himself and his unstable cousin, Kate, prove outrageous, tragic, and indelible. Winner of the 1962 National Book Award and named one of Time's 100 Best English Language Novels, Walker Percy's debut, The Moviegoer, is an American masterpiece and a classic of Southern literature. Insightful and romantic, gently humorous, even as it plums the depths of despair, it is the story of a young man's search for meaning in a shallow consumerist world. Well, it ought to still be relevant then, huh? Because it is still a shallow consumerist world. 
This isn't particularly long. Looks like it's about 252 pages. I'm looking into. I'm looking forward to digging into that. Number four. Was that number three? Yeah, this is number four on my book haul, my late September book haul list. This is Ron Curry, Everything Matters. And it used to be uh, the author was always listed as Ron Curry Jr. I believe they changed that when the father dies. So, so maybe his father passed away at some point. Anyway, not too long ago, I made a video where I explained that this was my favorite novel and, and how much I enjoyed it. On the front cover, it says, Joltingly Funny, the New York Times. This is the Penguin Edition. And it says, uh, Janet Maslin from the New York Times says, Startlingly Talented. Curry survives the inevitable apt comparisons to Kurt Vonnegut and writes in a tenderly mordant voice of his own. I would agree that Curry is a better writer than, than Vonnegut, for sure. Uh, but I see where the comparison comes from. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a great comparison. So, uh, you know what? Check out my video about uh, Everything Matters. The reason I got an extra copy of this is this is a copy from my friend Amy, uh, who wanted to read a book and talk about it on the channel with me. And she told me that I was welcome to pick a book for her. So this is what I picked for Amy to read. So you can look forward to that. Amy is way more charming, way more delightful, way more intelligent and perceptive than I'll ever be. So it'll be a lot of fun having her on here. So, all right. And now, number, that's, that's one, two, three, four. Number five might be the thickest, biggest book I've ever bought. You know, when I got uh, Proust's In Search of Lost Time, they had the courtesy to divide it up into into, into five different volumes for me. This is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition of Les Miserables by Victor Hugo with a new translation by Christine Donauer. Okay, look how thick this is. Okay, so this is as thick as all four of the other books that I've shown on here already. But I love the cover art. Okay, this is the Deluxe Edition. They have another edition too, but the cover art's really nice. It's got those little French flaps in there, too, and pictures of all the characters. I've never read this, never even started it. I'm looking forward to digging into it. I really am. Um, you know, I don't know too much about it, but uh, but I'm excited. Very excited. So, number six on my late September book call is a book that I've owned before. I don't know where my copy of it went. But I realized that I needed a new copy of it because it's Shake Timber, and I did not have my copy of The Friendly Shakespeare by Nori Epstein. Okay, so this is a wonderful book. And it's an old book. Yeah, I believe it came out while I was still in college. I believe I referenced it when I was teaching Shakespeare to high school students, in fact. So, um, it's very readable. It's nonfiction. It's it's lengthy. It's 500 and something pages, but we are talking about William Shakespeare here. Uh, I did not realize this. There's also a, a book called The Friendly Dickens, which is on the way, but hasn't arrived yet. And then there's The Friendly Jane Austen. Um, I believe there are more books in the series besides just those three. Uh, Steve Donnie, you made reference to that. But I didn't know about The Friendly Jane Austen until just this year. I knew about The Friendly Dickens and The Friendly Shakespeare. So if you're just getting started uh, with Shakespeare, a good place to start... You know, everybody who makes videos about how to get started with Shakespeare wants to recommend which plays are best to get started with, which, you know, any of them are fine to start with, frankly. You know, I, I like comedies, but other people might like tragedies. They're all good. You know, I don't think there's a bad Shakespeare play. The closest might be Titus Andronicus, which, as far as bad plays goes, it's, it's still pretty darn good. But I don't recommend that if you have no experience reading Shakespeare that you start by reading Shakespeare. I suggest coming at it a little more sideways. Maybe read a book about Shakespeare, which this would be perfect for because it's eminently readable. Or you could read or watch a movie like Shakespeare in Love or watch a TV show like Upstart Crow, which is a sitcom with Shakespeare as the main character. It's very, very funny. Uh, but, you know, you'll start to develop an ear. You'll start to get a feel for the names of the characters and the plays. There was a wonderful novel I read a few years ago called The Weird Sisters. And uh, most people are familiar with the scene in Macbeth where the, where the three witches are giving uh, Macbeth a prophecy about how he'll be king. And, and their actual name is, is The Weird Sisters. 
the novel is not about them, by the way. The novel is about three uh, youngish women who, they're grown up, but they're still youngish, who moved back home. Their father is a Shakespeare professor. So all their lives in their family, everybody's always quoted Shakespeare to each other. That's just what they do. But I like the back cover of this. It's a Penguin book. Um, it's got some questions that it says the book answers. Was Shakespeare murdered? What was the most popular theater snack in Shakespeare's day? In what play does the most spit fly, literally? At which play did T.S. Eliot scoff so far from being Shakespeare's masterpiece, the play is almost certainly an artistic failure? I think that was Hamlet, but I wouldn't swear to it. What was the real plot of Hamlet? What is a leaping house in Shakespearean slang? If someone calls you a Rampalian or a Fustelarian, should you feel insulted? And then there's a quote from Michiko Kakatani from the New York Times, spirited, informative, and provocative. So yeah, highly recommend The Friendly Shakespeare if you haven't read it already. And if you're into Dickens, get yourself a copy of The Friendly Dickens while you're at it. And number seven, the final book in this book haul for September, The Friendly Jane Austen. A well-mannered introduction to a lady of sense and sensibility. A book that I did not know existed until Steve Donahue pointed it out to me. So, and like the friendly Shakespeare, it's got a list of questions on the back that, that the book is going to answer. What are Jane Austen's 10 surefire ways to be vulgar? Who is Sense and Sensibility's only sexy man? How do you tell a rake from a rattle? Hint, they're both rascals. From what Austin novel is the famous first sentence, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of good fortune must be in want of a wife. Why did Virginia Woolf compare Jane Austen to William Shakespeare? What was the importance of the post office and the circulating library in the world of Jane Austen? How much money did Jane Austen earn from her books during her lifetime? Why is Jane Austen sometimes called the mother of the romance novel? I think that one's probably pretty obvious, right? Anyway, I don't often do book haul videos, but I wanted to do one today since, you know, for a change, I had a little bit of exposed, not exposable, disposable income and was able to actually purchase some books and put them on my shelves. I'm looking forward to reading Les Miserables with, uh, with my friend Lauren. Uh, we've decided we're going to try to finish it in a year. So... Um, I don't know. I don't know how much we have to read to finish it in a year, but you know, it's long. Anyway, that's all I've got for you tonight, and I will be back with more videos soon. Thanks for watching.